Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I want to show you how I painted this Orc Burner Bomber here. This was a major project. It took me way longer than I had expected, uh, which seems to be, uh, be the case for most of my models. I think, oh, this is going to be a quick, nice little project. And then it turns out to, uh, to occupy the better part of 50, 60, 70 hours or so. But uh, this was actually really, really fun to do though, even though it took a, a bit longer than I expected. Um, and I'm really pleased with all the colors and the way it, uh, it turned out. I also had a lot of fun with the, the base. I will be doing a uh, separate video for how I did the base. And I also had a lot of fun with this part here where I uh, have uh, placed a chain. It's supposed to look like it's flying, so that's why it's stretched out. Uh, with a lot of uh, orc skulls attached to it. Because as a burner bomber, I think that uh, uh, the pilot's lifespan is uh, dramatically shorter than it <laughs> perhaps otherwise would be. So these are the skulls of the uh, former pilots of this, uh, of this airplane. Uh, at least that's the uh, that's the story I've been telling myself. So uh, I want to show you here how it's uh, how it's done, and I hope you find it both uh, entertaining and perhaps even inspirational. So I start off with a model that's been primed with the Wraithbone spray, and then I start placing individual blocks of color using contrast paints. As I've said before, contrast paints are not really ideal for big flat surfaces like this. You can see that it's pretty uneven. Um, but as I'm going to be covering the entire surface with, surface with cross hatching, that doesn't really matter much. I don't have a plan before I start placing these blocks of color. I just start at one end and then go from there and see what happens. In worst case scenario, if I really, really hate what I've done, I can always either uh, strip it or just reprime it. Um, it usually doesn't happen, but I like, I like to think of it as a sort of a way out so that I don't get stressed about uh, doing a lot of planning. That takes the fun out of it somehow for me. And I'm using for the yellow, I use Jandan yellow, the contrast paint. For the pink, I use Volopus pink. And for the light turquoise color, I'm using Athermatic blue, one of my favorite colors of all time. I just really, really like this color and I think it works on almost any sort of model you can imagine. That's probably just me though. And then here for the darker blue, I use a, another contrast color, and this is a Keelian green. I haven't used this on uh, other of my Orc models, but I just thought it would uh, be a nice fit for, for the flyer here. Then I start doing, I, I call them dark edge highlights, which sounds a bit weird, dark highlights, but uh, I don't know how else to describe it. And I'm using Pterodon Turquoise for this. And you can see I place a bit of a broad line on the on the edges of the panel and that's because I'm going to do a lighter highlight but I want the darker ones to still be visible um, next to it so that's why the the uh, highlights are, are so uh, big whereas the cross hatches are generally smaller and more uh, a bit more subtle I think and I'm using the eight, uh, the pterodon turquoise here for this and I'm using it actually on three of the basic colors. I'm using it on the Volopus pink, I'm using it on the Athematic blue, and I will also be using it on the Achillean green. And I just think it's a really nice color that matches um, all three of these somehow. It's uh, It just works really well. I could also have gone with some sort of uh, darker purple for the Volopus pink, but uh, I kind of like uh, the sharp contrast it gives to the pink. I try to be relatively careful with the cross hatching because it can easily just be just one big blob of dark color. Next up, I start doing the lighter highlights and you can see here, I have already placed the uh, dark highlights for the yellow and I'm use I used the Griffhound orange for that. Somehow my camera died while filming that part, so I haven't got it here, but I did it the exact same way I used the Pterodon Turquoise on the blue and pink color. And here I'm using flash Kit Yellow from Citadel as a lighter highlight. I hate painting with yellow. It's really difficult to get it nice and smooth, I think, but it just works so well uh, for this technique. So, uh, so I do it, but that's why I always seem to start with the lighter highlights. I always start with the yellow because it's the one I just want to get over and done with, and then I can do all the others, which I find really enjoyable. 
So um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people just really hate doing yellow, so I don't think it's just me. And again, I'm trying to be a little bit careful with the edge highlighting and also with the uh, with the cross hatching, just to make sure that it it works as well as it possibly can. I don't have again a major plan for where I want the darker highlights and the lighter highlights to be. I just sort of go with it and see what uh, makes sense, especially on a flat surface like this, where you can't see. Oh, this is definitely up or down or closer to the sunlight. For the highlights here on the uh, on the pink, I first off use a mix of a P3 and it's called a Murderous Magenta and then a um, pigment called Cyclam Red from uh, PK Pro. And that's also the one I'm using for the lightest highlight here with the pink. This is the, uh, the pigment mixed with a bit of Army Painter Matte White and a bit of Painting Medium as well. For the lighter highlights here on the Achillean Green, I use Citadel Mood Green, which I think is uh, it's a l actually a little bit too subtle for my taste, but I'm going to do another more neon-like highlight later on. So uh, it gives a nice sort of base color. The last highlight I do on the yellow, I do with a Wraithbone, just the ordinary Wraithbone color here. And I take a bit of care not to overdo it because I want it to be a really warm, uh, bright yellow and not too uh, too whitish. Next up I do the uh, Vallejo Light Library Green highlight on the Achillean Green and I really really think this helps make it pop. Um, it's a little bit too translucent for my liking. It would be awesome if it could just be one highlight and then it was all uh, all done but you have to go over it a, a couple of times so you have to be a little bit careful to make it still look like cross hatching. For the pink, my last highlight is uh, white. I use Army Painted Matte White, and that's also the one I'm using to do the highlight on the Athematic Blue. You'll notice that for the, um, for the turquoise, I'm only using three colors, whereas for the others, I'm using uh, four or more colors. But I just think that uh, the uh, Athematic Blue, Teradon Turquoise, and then a white works really well. Next up, I'm going to be working here on the skulls that I'm going to have coming off the end of the plane. The skulls that represent all the downed pilots from uh, who have been piloting this burner bomber or other burner bombers. And I'm using skulls from the Citadel box of skulls, uh, a very, very handy thing. I just use a little bit of plastic cement to put them together. I want them to be stuck together like they're a long line of skulls that are every time a bomber is down, uh, another uh, piece is added to this uh, uh, ornament of skulls. I need part of the chain to be completely uh, rigid so that it can stick out from the end of the plane in a sort of 90 degree angle and, and make it look like it's uh, it's on the go. So I'm just using a bit of super glue on the chain to, to achieve that. Next up I take my skull rack here. I have uh, just primed it with Wraithbone and then I'm painting it with the contrast paint Skeleton Horde. After the super glue has dried completely like I wanted it to, I start painting it and I use Typhus Corrosion. I mean, I know it's a chain with middle colors, so I could probably just leave it as it is. But there is a bit of a discoloration from the super glue. And besides, I don't like the look of something that has not been painted on a painted model. I just think it looks weird. Uh, in the same vein, I would never use or, you know, stones are found in the garden on a base and not paint them. I just don't like the look of that. Once the typhus corrosion is dry, I use a bit of riser rust and just do a very, very quick uh, dry brushing of that to make the chain look really nice and rusty. Next up, I try to figure out how to attach the chain to the airplane. I want it to look like some grot has just tied it on and it's, uh, it's kind of wonky and it might just fall off at some point. So I'm just trying to loop the chain around and see see how it works. Um, and I, I, I kind of like this. And uh, I'm leaving a little bit of it just dangling just because I think it looks fun. Then I dry brush the, uh, the skulls with a wraith bone. Just a very quick, easy to do dry brush and to pick out some of the details. And then lastly, a, a quick dry brush with the Army Painter Matte White. And lastly, I try to figure out how to get the the skulls to attach to the chain um, 
and I just use again a bit of super glue to make sure that everything sticks. And I'm actually pretty happy with this look. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's probably not perfect, but I think it looks fun and I think it's believable that the orcs would do something like this. And it just fits uh, with the story of my orcs generally. And here you can see the finished results. I must say that I really, really look forward to putting this model on the tabletop and playing a couple of games with it. I've never actually played with my orcs yet because I don't yet have an entire army, but I just can't wait. It's going to be so, so much fun. So anyway, I hope you like this video. If you have a model of your own you would like to show off, you are more than welcome to join our Facebook group, the Dyson Demon Showroom. I will leave a link to that in the show notes. You can also find me on Twitter and on Instagram, also under the Dyson Demons. So thank you again for watching this video. If you like it, I hope you will consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel or even leaving a comment in the comment section below. And uh, that will definitely help with the YouTube algorithm so more people will see my videos. Thank you so much. Bye.